Okay, I see some folks filtering in. Welcome to the Regional Admission uh, Counselors of California, RACC, Virtual College Fair. So incredibly important that you're able to attend this virtually uh, during these difficult times. You're going to be able to hear from six, hopefully six amazing panelists about their institutions and if it could be a fit for you. Uh, pay attention to that chat. They're going to throw in some really informa uh, important information there, such as contact information, because that is probably the number one thing you should do is contact these folks, because this is their job and this is what they are meant to do is to help you find the right fit. Uh, if you have a question for any of our panelists at any time, please use the Q&A button, either at the top or the bottom of your screen. That Q&A button, you can ask a question to one of the panelists or it can be a question to all of them. Uh, if, uh, and during the 45 minutes, they will be able to answer that. They can type it in or they can speak to it live. Uh, you can sign up for future sessions in the same place that you signed up for this one and a recording is available at strivescan.com forward slash r-a-c-c i will put all of that information into the chat for you um, but with that we are going to kick it off with university of glasgow oh you're right you're right not my bad <laughs> i wrote it down and didn't but a goldsmith <laughs> university of london thank you <laughs> Hey everyone, um, I am Will. I am the international officer at Goldsmiths University of London. I am personally based in Brooklyn, New York, but as you might be able to tell by our name, Goldsmiths is located in the dynamic city of London. We were founded in 1891 and have been a member of the prestigious University of London since 1904. Our campus is medium sized. We have around 10,000 students on our single site campus very diverse student body. About 35% of our students come from outside of the UK. Uh, nearly half of our students are students of color, a very sizable LGBTQ plus and first generation populations on campus. And Americans are the second largest cohort of international students. So you definitely won't be alone. And California is our largest state for Americans. So uh, you definitely, definitely will not be alone as a Californian. We have over 55 research centers on campus and we highly encourage students to get involved in research from year one. We've also implemented a Green New Deal on our campus and we are committing to 90% carbon neutrality by 2025. To that end, we have banned beef on our campus. We have banned single use plastics, installed solar panels on most of our buildings, divested our endowment from fossil fuels and many other initiatives going forward to meet that goal. So our campus is located just about 10 minutes southeast of the city center in the really vibrant community of New Cross. Goldsmiths is one of the most creative and politically active universities in the, the UK consistently. And uh, it's definitely noticeable in the area as well. There's tons of music venues, art galleries, coffee shops, cafes. Uh, it's a really fun place to be a student. And all your courses will be held inside uh, our one campus here uh, inside the orange line. We have residence halls both on and just off campus. So it's never more than a five to 10 minute walk uh, as a first year student and great access around the entire uh, city of London. You can see our campus down here and uh, pretty much anywhere you wanna go in the city center is less than a half hour away. You can get to the main train stations quickly to get around the rest of the UK. And the airports are also located really close to campus, uh, about 45 minutes to an hour away. Our academics focus on the finite performing arts and humanities of which we're ranked in the top 100 universities in the world. Uh, eight of our 18 departments are among the world's top 50. We're extremely well known for media and communications, which includes our screen school and school of journalism. We have the largest media and communications department in Europe. We also have uh, very uh, amazing facilities for art and design, and we're ranked really highly there as well. Uh, every student gets their own studio space. And we're also ranked number 21 in the UK for the quality and significance of our research. Bachelor's degrees are three years in length in England and you have the potential to earn a master's in one year as well. Here is a non-exhaustive list of all the programs that we offer on our campus. Uh, we have around 75 undergraduate degrees. Some common ones for Americans that they'll pursue our computer science, our psychology programs, our business and management courses, uh, music, theater, uh, media communications, art and design, things like that. 
Our application is on UCAS, which I'm sure you'll hear a lot about from some other presenters tonight. Um, but that is the affectionate name for the university and college application service. This is similar to the Common App, but it's an aggregate application for the United Kingdom. Uh, applications are direct to a degree program, so you must choose a program before you uh, enter the university. We are test optional, but we do require a 3.0 unweighted GPA to apply. And I'm happy to answer any questions about UCAS in the chat, in the q and I should say. Our tuition ranges from around 16,000 to 23,000 pounds, depending on the program. Most are on that lower range. We do offer international scholarships for students and we also accept federal loans. Uh, the total cost of attendance is uh, typically cheaper than your out-of-state public or private universities. And you can also save some cash by working while you're in the UK on a student visa, you are allowed to work. And most internships are paid as well, like the vast, vast majority. That's just great. Uh, our accommodation is mixed gender, and we do guarantee it for international students in year one. After that, you'll typically move into a flat with friends. Uh, it's super easy to find accommodation in London. It's a city of about 12 million people. And it's suite style housing and you'll have your own room with your own bathroom. So a little bit different from your dorm style communal living and bathroom situation in US schools. And you'll share a kitchen and living space. We are self catered, which means that we do not have meal plans on campus. We do have restaurants and cafeterias on campus, but uh, there's no built-in meal plan, which is also a huge cost savings because meal plans are typically way more expensive than uh, just ad hoc purchasing of food. Uh, we also place a really large emphasis on careers and uh, internships at Goldsmiths. We have 1,600 work placements annually throughout London and also opportunities abroad. Very high entrepreneurial rate, about 14% of our students will start their own business within one year of graduation. And we do have a business incubator on campus as well. Huge alumni network, super influential alumni. Uh, Steve McQueen, namely, is, is a huge uh, benefactor of the school and an alumnus. And tons of Turner Prize, Mercury Prize, Oscar, BAFTA winners. Lastly, tons of clubs and societies to join. Uh, we have over 120 activities on campus, including our sports. We compete in the London University Sports League, and we also have intramural sports available. So plenty of opportunity to socialize uh, and meet people from all over the world. So thank you so much. If you have any questions about Goldsmiths, please feel free to pop them in the Q&A. Uh, my email address is located here and our social media is uh, all at Goldsmiths UOL. And I'll pop uh, my information in the chat as well as, as well as our virtual tour. Thank you. All right, thank you Will from Goldsmiths. Uh, next up we have King's College London. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley. I am from King's College London. Bear with me while I get my slides up here. Okay, great. So I am an international student recruitment manager based in the States for Kings. And the first slide always sticks. Don't know why, but anyway, Kings today. We are the fourth oldest university in England. We were founded in 1829 as one of the founding colleges of the University of London, like Goldsmiths. Today, we maintain our prestige by being ranked according to QS as number 31 in the world, number seven in the UK, and number three in London. So our graduates are highly sought after, which is why 93% of them are in furthering their education or are in employment within three months of graduating from King's. I should also mention that King's is part of the Russell Group, which is um, an association of public research universities in the UK. So when I talk about um, academics at King's, research really is at the heart, especially at the undergraduate level, but we will get there in a minute. And before we talk about academics, let's talk about the campus community. So King's is a large urban campus. We have over 33,000 students joining us every year. 16,000 of whom, so about half, are international, representing 185 countries from around the globe. And every year, about 1,200 students join us from the US. So we're at one point in your shoes inquiring about studying overseas for a full degree program and are now part of the King's campus community or part of our alumni community, which for the US is about 10,000 US alumni from King's. We also have about 300 activities, societies, volunteer opportunities, 
um, ways to get involved on campus and within the greater London community. So if you are interested in a very diverse, multicultural campus environment, campus community, uh, King's might be the place for you and it's very representative of the city of London itself. And here are our faculty. So we have nine faculties across our um, undergraduate programs and postgraduate, but for undergraduate faculties here, our most competitive are life sciences and medicine. As I mentioned, research is, is a big, um, it's a core value to us at King's. Law is very uh, popular, business as well, but growing in popularity, especially amongst our US students, our programs within our arts and humanities faculty, social science, um, psychiatry, psychology, and neuroscience. So we really seek out US students to diversify our classrooms and the campus to fill those programs because um, we find that a lot of US students are very attracted to them. So. Um, we are on UCAS solely at the undergraduate level, so if you are applying to King's, you will have to get familiar with the UCAS process. Um, like a lot of the universities from the UK tonight, we have three-year undergraduate programs. Um, FAFSA is applicable to our programs at the undergraduate and postgraduate level at King's, so a lot of ways for you to um, to join us and, and King's is very accessible as our most of our program or our universities tonight. So don't automatically assume that an overseas education is more expensive than a domestic one. And something that sets us apart, um, especially in my opinion, when it comes to King's is our London location. We are very centrally located. Whether or not you have been to London before, you can recognize from this photo some of the famous London landmarks like Big Ben, House of Parliament, London Eye, the River Thames. Our five campuses are located along the River Thames. One of them, our Denmark Hill campus, is three miles south of the river in South London, still very centrally located. Um, but the city is truly an extension of the classroom in that sense. And we do have about a dozen residence halls. We have um, private residences, intercollegiate residences, any comfortability level that you have when it comes to living and learning with us at King's in London, we can accommodate that for you. And yes, we do guarantee our first year um, students have accommodation and you are guaranteed a single room, which is very attractive to, uh, to US students and, and why wouldn't it be? Um, bear in mind as well that London was ranked most recently in 2019 as the best student city according to QS. And it's because there are about half a million students studying there. The city really caters to the student population, which is very unique to a city the size of London. And that is it for me. So I would recommend keeping in touch via email, UniBuddy, which is a really great way to chat with current students, with um, faculty, staff, especially since we can't travel right now, it's going to be a good way to get that student perspective. But um, I will put my information in the chat and want to thank everyone again for joining us. All right. Thank you, Ashley. Next up, we have IE University. Hi everyone, super excited to talk to you today. My name is Micah Trobman and I'm here to talk to you about IE University, uh, located in Spain, not the UK. Um, I'm also an IE alum. I went to IE, I'm from California, didn't speak any Spanish, happy to connect with you, help you with your applications, all that fun stuff. Um, but I always like to start out with some fun facts about Spain because Spain is an amazing country. Um, it's incredibly old. There's a lot of world UNESCO sites. Um, the first modern novel book that's been translated in more languages after the Bible will be Don Quixote. I suggest reading it. It's really good. Um, most people know Spanish is the second most spoken language in the world and Spain's actually the second most visited country in the world. Um, but something, you know, about that really highly speaks of the culture. Spain is a sunny vacation place. There's over um, almost 5,000 miles of beaches. Um, it's got some of the most diverse cultures. Um, they're known for their festivals. I'm sure some people have heard of the, the tomato festival, running of the bulls. They have the highest amounts of bars in all of Europe and the largest club in the world, which is located in Ibiza. So fun stuff. Um, so moving on to IE. We quite, we're quite unique. Um, one, we do have two campuses located in Spain. They're about 30 minutes apart. The first city is in Segovia. Um, our campus was built in 1218. It's older than the US. It's a rural campus. If you like 
you know, hiking, mountains, being outdoors, this is a great place to start. It's also protected by the United Nations. And then our second campus is in the capital of Spain, which is Madrid. Um, Madrid is like a city that never sleeps. It's absolutely amazing. Um, we have our brand new IE Tower that is the third tallest uh, university in the world and the first and only high rise university in Europe. Um, so a little bit about us, uh, we're one of the world's most international universities. Over 75% of our students are coming from all over the world to study at IE. We've got over 140 nationalities, over 45 languages spoken on campus, but everything is, of course, taught in English. Um, we're known for entrepreneurship. Uh, we do have an incubator on campus, and about 8% of our students graduate with their own companies. We are known for our practical teaching methodology as well as technology and innovation. So think AI, virtual reality learning is gonna be incorporated in your studies. And we're also known for humanities and sustainability. We're highly ranked uh, first in Spain, seventh in Europe and 18th worldwide. Um, and we do have a high percentage of students getting jobs within six months, which is reported for the class of 2020, 95% and over 43% of them are working now in a different country. So if you're someone who has always loved to learn um, how to work in a different country, this is definitely a great school or even just going abroad, to be honest. These are gonna be our single and dual degrees. We offer four and five year degrees. Um, some of our most popular degrees are gonna be business. Um, we've got one of the world's best law programs, um, uh, international relations, computer science, and of course, all of our dual degrees. So the idea of coming to IE is really building your own path. There's a lot of professional development. Um, starting off your first and your second year, you have what are called IEU labs. They are on-campus internships and you can kind of mix and match. Um, so if you're someone, maybe your first year is interested in sustainability and then the next year you're interested in marketing, you can start putting those on your resume. We do offer advanced seminars and honors programs where you can actually network and have lunches with CEOs. Um, of course, we offer a semester away or even two semesters away, so you can do a paid internship uh, because you do have experience on your resume as well as an international exchange. We've got over 160 partners worldwide. Um, campus life, there's a lot going on. Spain's an amazing place to be. It's incredibly, it's one of the most you know, affordable countries in the EU. We've got over 125 clubs, over 1,500 events of, as of 2021. Here's a small list of some of our clubs. Um, fun factor debate club is world renowned. Um, we've won quite a few debates, even against postgraduate or master students in the last few years. Our theater club actually recently just published a book. Um, we even have a sailing club, which is kind of crazy. Um, I would be happy to connect with you just in, in sake of time um, and really walk you through the online application. It's really not gonna be any different than the American system, except we will ask for a couple extra things inside your documents, like a photo of yourself, a copy of your passport. We do require the admissions test. It can be SAT or ACT, or it could be our own admissions test. With our admissions test, you actually don't have to study for it. It's about an hour. It measures how you learn and helps us pro promote more diversity. And then because we are known for tech and innovation, we have an online assessment and I can go into that. Um, and then you'll finish that admissions process off with a personal interview. Um, we offer financial aid to every single student that comes to IE. You can apply. Um, we've got over 21 scholarships that you can choose from. You can choose up to three. Um, every IE student pays the same tuition. So regardless if you're coming from the US or Spain or Australia. And then we also offer scholarship opportunities before you apply, um, starting with 11th grade students. Um, we have something that's called the Junior Advisory Board. And then for 12th grade students, we have what are called Global Challenges. And then of course you can apply for more. Um, we offer residences, host families, or renting a flat or an apartment. Um, so it's really up to the kind of lifestyle that you would like to live. We do recommend that first year students do a residence just so you make friends, you have time to get to know the city a little bit more and then kind of make friends and then usually rent a flat afterwards. Um, but I think that will be all for me today. Again, my name, my name is Micah. I'm super excited to be connected. Thank you so much for coming and listening and I look forward to connecting with you again in the future. All right, thank you, Micah. Next up we have Macquarie University, Sydney. Perfect. Thank you. Let me just get this going. Definitely got the wrong screen there. 
and I can't get it up. Are we good there? Did I get that? Oh, there, yeah, now you did. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. My name is Leanne, um, and I represent Macquarie University in Sydney, Australia. I am based in Los Angeles. Um, for anyone who hasn't been to Sydney, it's not that far away. It is about um, 12 hours from the west coast of the US. You leave about 11 o'clock at night and get into the city, Sydney about 7 a.m. the next morning. Um, being a student at Macquarie offers you the best of both worlds, a big cosmopolitan city experience with the wonderful beaches, as you can see here, which is Bondi Beach, which is one of the um, most famous beaches in Sydney. And fun fact for you, if you were to see one new beach in Australia every day, it would take you 27 years to see them all. Um, and so once you explore the beaches, you can retreat back to campus, which is a beautiful parkland university. We have about 40,000 students on campus and of that there are 12,000 international students, so an incredibly diverse student population. A lot of students ask, what's it like to study in Australia? Um, and I think Australian students want to have a really similar experience to US students when you're on when you're studying and on campus. We have all the clubs and associations as you would expect from a US school. Um, we have a lot of sports programs available too, although the NCAA doesn't exist outside of the US. Um, we do have two outdoor swimming pools, um, well actually one outdoor swimming pool, one indoor. Um, our weather does allow that. It's quite similar to Southern California. If it's below 60 degrees in winter, we'll complain it's too cold. If it's above 90 degrees in summer, we'll complain it's too hot. So we do like a very temperate, mild climate in Sydney. If you do want to explore um, ski mountains, you can certainly do that. It's about a three hour drive from um, campus. Um, you are able to, um, Sorry, we don't have the NCAA as I was saying, but we certainly have a lot of sports available. Um, a lot of students say that the Australian University Games are the highlight of their university degree. Um, the university itself is a comprehensive course offering. Um, most of our degrees are three years in duration as we don't have general education requirements. You can certainly choose to do a double degree if you're not entirely sure what you wanna study or if you just wanna study quite a few different things. So for example, you could do a Bachelor of Commerce and a Bachelor of Science. Um, some of our most popular programs are our business administration, international business um, and marketing. We also have really strong media and communications programs, um, journalism and creative writing, um, and really great programs in cybersecurity and homeland security to counterterrorism, for example. We specialize in software and telecommunications engineering and fun fact for you, we actually invented Wi-Fi, so you're welcome. We also have really strong earth and environmental sciences like marine science and climate science. So if you're thinking about going into that area, Australia is a wonderful place to study that. It's a very practical hands-on program. You're able to do placements across Australia, New Zealand, Fiji and further abroad. Um, we have our flagship program is our Bachelor of Clinical Science, Doctor of Medicine degree, um, which is um, a six year degree out of high school and you're able to um, come back to the States in your final year and do um, clinical rotations at Washington St. Louis and Dartmouth College and then become a doctor within six years. So awesome program for anyone thinking of going into the medical field. You certainly can stay on, on campus if you would like to. It's not compulsory, um, but we definitely recommend it. As long as you apply early, you won't have any problems getting accommodation. Um, and as my colleagues were saying, it's the same as the UK. You will have your own bedroom and your own bathroom while um, on campus. We do have meal plans, but they are associated with the um, accommodation provider. So you just need to make sure you're choosing um, the appropriate one if you do want a meal plan. Um, a lot of students think it can be crazy expensive to study overseas. It's honestly not that bad. Our tuition is about $24,000 um, and all in sort of in cost of attendance, including a flights, accommodation, insurance, all that fun stuff is about $40,000. Um, things to take into consideration is you're obviously doing a three-year degree program most likely. Um, so you're able to enter the workforce a year quicker than your peers staying in the States. Um, you're able to stay and work in Australia after graduation and a minimum um, graduate wage is about $55,000. We also accept the US financial aid. We do have scholarships and you are able to work while studying a minimum wage is about $20 in Australia, which is pretty helpful. It's free to apply to the university. Um, 
we don't have specific deadlines, but we recommend doing the application at a similar time as um, the US schools. Um, you are able to get a response in about two weeks of submitting a full application, which is pretty cool as well. It's free to apply to the university and you do so direct to our website. Um, we just require your passport, transcripts and your test um, scores if you are submitting them, but we are currently test optional due to COVID-19. Um, so once you submit those documents, you'll hopefully get an offer letter and then you can apply for scholarships, financial aid um, and purchase your overseas healthcare insurance, book your, get your visa, book your flights, come to Australia and we will pick you up at the airport. Being in the Southern Hemisphere, our dates are a little different. We commence in February and July of each year and we do have a smaller intake in November. Most of our US students choose to start in the July, but you are welcome to defer to February, um, no problem at all if you would like to. Um, for any further information, feel free to take a snap of this um, QR code or take my details and I would be more than happy to chat with you after the session. Thanks. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next up we have University of Roehampton. Hi hey everyone. Sorry, I can't. Um... No worries, Leanne. I think we're out of schedule anyway. Mm -hmm. It's actually gone. There we go. Thanks. All righty. There we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Haley Drogas, and I'm the regional manager for North America for University of Roehampton, or as we like to consider it, London's campus university. So situated on a beautiful Parkland campus in Southwest London, um, the University of Roehampton has a very proud history stretching back about 180 years now, actually. In 2019, we were ranked in the top 10 universities of London, and we are a very quick commute into central London from our beautiful Parkland campus, which is right next to the Royal Park of Richmond. And just a few facts and figures about Roehampton. We have 141 nationalities on campus and of our 8,000 student population, approximately 10% of those students are international. That's not including EU students. That brings us to about 20% inter international. And we're very proud to say that 93% of our students find employment um, within their chosen career field within the first uh, about six months of graduating. And of course, with us being a London university, we have all that London has to offer from a thousand museums and galleries, which most of are free of charge to students, to all of the culture, the markets, um, the theater, everything that London has is available to our students. And uh, here on this slide, you can see a map that shows in proximity to central London where we're located. So we are the green building um, right down the River Thames. And then you can see central London. Um, you'll see like the little big band icon and all of the buildings that are clustered together, central London. And if you scan this QR code, it takes you to our spectacular new virtual tour that just launched this week. And on this slide, again, same QR code in case you missed it um, on the last slide. On this slide, you can see a graphic of our campus. And we have four historical colleges that are a part of and what make up the University of Roehampton. And on this graphic map, three of our four colleges are shown. Our last college, Whitelands College, is a little bit ways off from the L-shaped campus that you see on this screen. So as you can see, we've got a very beautiful, large green campus with two lakes on site, and there is so much to do on campus. And we're very proud to say that 66% of our research um, done on campus is considered world-class standard. And within some of our departments, 100% of the research is world-class. And here is a list of all of our undergraduate course offerings. We have seven academic departments, including the School of Arts, Business, Education, Humanities, Life Sciences, Psychology, and Social Sciences that are available to students. And just a quick note on how to apply. We are on the UCAS application, like some of my colleagues that presented before me. And then we also have a free application available on our own website. 
and just a little bit about our undergraduate entry requirements. Our, most of our programs have a typical entry requirement of either a 2.8 to a 3.0, cumulative GPA, and just a few of our um, programs do require an additional AP exam or currently an SAT subject test. And we are SAT ACP optional. However, if you have taken one of those exams, we always recommend still submitting because it never hurts to have more supplemental materials on your application. And we have numerous scholarships available. Some are listed on um, this slide and we have a lot more on our website as well. A lot of my US students I find do win a merit-based scholarship with us um, and can get anywhere from 1,000 up to 4,000 British pounds off of their tuition every academic year. And in terms of affordability, one thing I like to make note on, and I'm sure some of my colleagues mentioned, in the UK, we um, our bachelor's degrees are only three years long. So that alone makes you save a lot of money on what you would pay to attend university. And roughly within the US dollar um, conversion rate, our average annual cost of attending Rahampton comes up to approximately about um, 35,474. And with that being said, if you compare that to out of state public schools or private schools in the US, that is quite affordable for our annual um, tuition and expenses. And we are on FAFSA, so you can use US federal aid to, or loans rather, to attend Rohampton. And we have accommodations available on campus um, across all four colleges, numerous options available, and all have single bedrooms. And we have so much to offer in terms of social life on campus, from clubs and societies to activities, getting involved with the student union and competitive sports, which you can see on this slide. And we're very excited that we have launched a study play program with the premier football club, Crystal Palace. So any um, male US soccer players who are looking to play soccer or in the UK football at a more advanced competitive level, we do have that um, program available for our students. And that is it. So one last thing, um, if you scan this QR code on this slide, that will take you to our Unibuddy page of our website where you can chat in live time with current students on campus and you can filter it by um, them being also American or by their program or um, level or year of study as well. So I do encourage you to do that as well as my email is there to get in touch with me and my colleagues. Thank you all so much for your time. All right, thank you. Uh, there is a question in the Q&A. If uh, you folks could answer that, that'd be awesome. Uh, but if I could have everybody come on screen, please. And I'm gonna share my screen. We're all gonna, I'm gonna ask you a question. We'll answer in the same order that you presented. Uh, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process, starting with Goldsmiths? Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I think one, uh, not everyone can obviously go for a full degree abroad. So there's plenty of opportunity to do study abroad or um, you know, a, a short uh, study abroad over the summer. Uh, Diversity Abroad is a great organization that you can research. Um, and yeah, other than that, I think the UCAS is a great uh, tool as well. So I'm sure some of my colleagues may mention that. Yeah, it, UCAS really is for students, for counselors, for us, you know, it's just, it's a really good reference if you are looking to find some resources for different universities you didn't know were an option. It's just, it's something we refer to a lot, but I'm not going to steal wills. I just want to say that um, we can't, you know, because we can't travel, we can't really get that campus vibe right now. We have a lot of um, virtual campus tours that are available to us. You know, there's a lot of online options. We have, I think I mentioned UniBuddy is an option to get the student perspective. Also checking out our um, social media pages, especially those that are run by students. You'll just get um, insight that you wouldn't necessarily get and, you know, trying to get that vibe, as I mentioned, that would be my recommendation. I think I'm next. Um, a piece of advice is think big, um, you know, expand your network in terms of what universities, obviously you're all here, so you are interested in, in looking at schools internationally. Um, you'd be surprised how much more affordable 
going abroad is than staying in the US, like some of my colleagues already mentioned. Um, and another piece, and this is actually not mine, I'm going to steal it from another rep, and I'm kind of hating myself for getting who, who had mentioned it, um, but create an email account for all of your university applications. Don't use your high school um, email because those usually close and we're still communicating with you throughout the summer if you're applying for a visa or anything like that. So that would be for me. The world is a big place, but it's also so interconnected. Um, so do you think big? There's so many incredible opportunities available and probably never again in your life you're going to have the ability to explore so many different things. So don't be afraid to look overseas and to make it happen because as soon as you're there and you're comfortable, you will never regret it. I always just like to make sure students know to not be afraid to ask questions and do their research. Um, and when I say that specifically for things like funding and scholarships, a lot of students are afraid to ask about that or don't know how to bring that up. That's, you know, why our roles exist. We're here to help you and we want you to be able to get all the information you can. And so many scholarships every year go unused. So don't be afraid to ask questions about things like that. Those are all great pieces of advice. So we have time for another question. Same order. Uh, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And again, starting with Goldsmiths. Um, yeah, so I think Goldsmiths, um, one of the hallmarks of our university is that we're really interconnected with London. So a lot of uh, programs that we put on are in conjunction with the city of London, uh, the London International Festival of Theater, to name one. We also have Pure Gold, which is our music festival on campus. Uh, it's not quite Coachella, but, you know, we have James Blake as an alumnus, uh, KDB. There's like some pretty big names that have come out of Goldsmith. So always something fun going on uh, around our campus. I think mine is um, one that just passed. It's at the end of March every year. It's our global day of service. It's usually in person. It was virtual this year, of course, but it has to do um, around, it revolves around our foundation. So our founding day. Um, if you look up King's College London dual day, yes, it refers to an actual duel that took place hundreds of years ago, how British, um, but it also has to do in present day. Um, it, it just kind of reflects our service to society and um, how that's part of our value at King. So um, very interesting. Um, for IE, when I was there, I would say one of my favorite was uh, the Global Village. It's um, a tradition that we have every year to celebrate all the different cultures and, and diverse traditions that people bring to our campus. So people make traditional food, we're, uh, wear traditional clothing, music, teach each other different dances. And it's basically like a party um, that you feel like you're kind of traveling all over. It's, it's awesome, it's a good time. We celebrate Conception Day, which was when the university was signed into being, um, but it's actually a week um, in September and it's a music and arts festival that happens on campus. At Roehampton, um, we have a fun activity, so to speak, that happens at the end of every academic year across our four colleges. So similar to how in Harry Potter, um, all four houses in the movies and books um, compete every academic year for the House Cup. We have the same thing called the College Cup. So all four colleges compete and it's a lot of fun. All right, that does sound like a lot of fun. Um, so actually, before we we wrap everything up, uh, there is a question in the Q and A, and this it's actually for Ashley. Um, but I think it leads into what I usually try to end these with is to contact these folks here because this is their job. Uh, their job is to get you in touch with, uh, you know, how to apply, testing, everything that you need to know to get admitted. So I don't know, Ashley, if you want to kind of piggyback on top of that. She, uh, the question is, I've reached out to admissions regarding film and screenwriting, and I've yet to hear back. What do you recommend in that instance? 
Uh, yeah, we uh, this time of year we are getting a lot of responses, or excuse me, a lot of um, applications and admissions is working to respond right now. We have something called a portal that I assume a lot of universities have as a direct way to communicate with admissions, which is oddly enough the fastest. Even though you um, seem to have had to wait for a little bit of time, I do apologize for that. But um, yeah, this is like that time when you can communicate directly with admissions outside of this window. Um, you know, through the application cycle, it is me and my colleagues here, I, I'm sure are similar, but um, patience, I hate to say that, but it's, um, it's a big part of it. And it sounds like a lot of other universities on here have a quicker response time, but um, yeah, I, and I, I can respond um, as well to that individually, just to put my yeah. email out there again. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and I just, if you haven't yet, make sure your contact information is in there. Uh, we appreciate you so very much because again, you are the experts, you're, you're the connection, you're the key basically to your institution. So we are so grateful for your knowledge and all the work that you do, uh, working with parents, working with students, and especially, you know, oftentimes when you're in overseas school, uh, kind of figuring out those differences. So thank you so very much. Uh, if you are attending this, uh, we are grateful. Um, when you leave here, you're going to have a four question survey, super, super simple, but it's incredibly helpful to us. So if you could make sure that you answer that, that would be fantastic. Uh, again, you can sign up for more of these sessions in the same place that you signed up for this one. Um, my computer froze. Okay, there it goes. Um, so the same place that you signed up for this one, uh, there's more sessions and a recording. And I did answer a question with that. And I also will put that in the chat again at strivescan.com forward slash R-A-C-C. So super, super simple. And again, thank you to our expert panelists. And thank you to everyone out there who was able to join us and have a good night.